You're listening to Body IO FM with your hosts, Kiefer and Dr. Rocky, where cutting edge science meets the razor's edge of health and performance. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Body IO FM with your host, Kiefer, and co host, Dr. Rocky. Hello, Kiefer. Uh, as everybody knows, we uh, uh, no commentary on Rocky's response today, but uh, <laughs> as everybody knows, no commentary is commentary, I guess. Um, but we want to talk about uh, basically how this show is uh, sponsored, uh, which is through e ebook sales and materials and uh, also supplements now that those are out. So those all help to fund this podcast. So uh, for those of you who've asked how you can directly support the podcast, it's uh, very easy to, you know, buy carb backloading, carb night, uh, tra- any of the transforming recipes. Uh, we now, uh, Pattern of Health, uh, we have a deal with Fred Navarro where we uh, try to help him out uh, with his book promotions uh, and uh, High Lead Athletic Wear, of course. And uh, for now, that's about the list of things. We'll probably have a URL that just uh, gives you a collection because we're actually, as everybody knows, I've started to, I've started basically a a publishing effort to get really good information out there for people who don't have time to manage it themselves. Uh, So we'll probably have one place where everybody can go and just find the latest and greatest. Um, But that'll be coming up later. And uh, I think... I think that's the normal, normal spiel. If you if you have already bought all those things and there's nothing left to buy, then thank you very much. Uh, you make this podcast possible, and uh, I'm always happy to provide the information on here for everybody. Uh, any commentary, Rocky? Uh, do we have to still mention High Lead? I did. Oh, you did. Oh, so you're not even on. you're not even paying attention when I talk in the opening. It's basically what you're saying. <laughs> That's I'm horrible. just testing you. Yeah, all right. So, uh, uh, and somebody who's, you know, their, their training philosophy, they, they recently published a manual uh, a few months ago, and it's been, cr- uh, you know, cropping up on my Facebook and in my Twitter feed, uh, people asking questions about it, and it is John Anderson's deep water method. Uh, so I thought since... So many people in the audience are apparently using it and have so many questions about it. And I know John, I'm, I'm helping John actually r- release a newer version of it uh, very soon. We'll, we'll keep you updated with details on that. So make sure you're on the email list uh, so you can find out when that's releasing. But I thought we would just get John on the show and ask him about it uh, and give us the details and, you know, kind of how it came, came to be and, uh, you know, some other interesting stuff that's uh, going on in John's life. So, John Anderson, thank you for being on the show. Keeper, thank you very much for having me. Looking forward to it. Uh, always uh, a great honor to uh, you know get on and you know a platform like this and, and share some of what's going on with uh, my deep water philosophy thing that I've really just started to uh, bring it to the public over the last year. You know, for the most part. All of my years of training and everything I've done athletically has always been kind of closed, if you will. I've never been very open or public with how I do things. So it's time to start to uh, let uh, let the general public see the inside out of how I've done everything. Well, it's, uh, you know, I've got to say of, you know, all the people I've talked to, from Olympic gold medalists to, you know, MMA fighters and, you know, bodybuilders, powerlifters, you are one of the most impressive athletes I think I've ever had the honor of, of meeting and talking to. I mean, the things you've done, uh, would you like, I mean, just, you know, you're, you're, you're strong man. And not only that, not only the things you've done, the way you've looked while you've done them. I mean, you name it, your strong man competition. <laughs> yeah. it, it's, it's ridiculous. You look like an action figure all the time. And you're out there, you're a top-level strongman competitor, which is insane for the level of endurance that takes and, you know, the strength, all of those kind of things. And then you're, you know, 
why don't you I'll, I'll just let you tell everybody you know your accomplishments because you've even had some very recent ones that are phenomenal yeah phenomenal. yeah 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 well let's see here i guess going back uh, <laughs> strongman was my first that was my first uh uh real that basically that was my first uh professional career and uh you know that was uh you know i had a, I had a great great run um much like everything else i'll share here with my other careers uh, everything that I've done athletically has been kind of um, from the start and to me reaching a high level has been extremely short period of time. Um, <clears throat> like in, in Strongman, uh, my third competition was also the national championship, the pro national championship. So I basically uh, tried my first competition, uh, won it, did my second competition, won my pro card and then <laughs> went to the national championship and qualified to be an international player and off I went. And that was basically the the birth of my strongman career. Now, as you were mentioning before, <laughs> how I looked through all this, we'll get into that a little bit later, but it really, it really kind of, the, 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 if you really want to boil it all down, it's because I'm a forever fat kid. I was a fat guy as a young as a young man. I was a fat kid with just an insatiable love for cookies and ice cream. And uh, you know, even at 42 years old, you know, you know, jamming through my third professional athletic career, I still sometimes wake up, take a piss, look at myself in the mirror, and see the little 15 year old with a cold over tits. You know, <laughs> yeah. so so uh, so as far as how I look. I think that's probably something that, you know, was rooted so deep in me. You know, I was as a, a, a young, you know, fat kid, I just was, I, I felt like I could never bring myself back to that. Even in strongman where, you know, being a, a big round hairy guy is not, that's not a problem. You know, it's not like there's, there, you're, you're not being judged on how you look. You're being judged purely on your performance. <clears throat> it's lift or don't lift. You know, so, but, you know, me, I've just always been that guy that has, you know, I've, I basically found a way to keep myself in phenomenal shape and perform at the, the highest level. And that's probably what makes it so unique, as, as you mentioned before, you know, and, and basically, you know, my handbook for that is deep water. So obviously we'll get into some of the, we'll give a kind of a sneak peek at that here a little bit later in the podcast, I'm sure. But um, that's, that's career number one. Then, uh, you know, as, as uh, we can all imagine, for those of you that have never competed in Strongman, there is a fairly short shelf life. If you want to say short, you know, you're still talking close to a decade. But uh comes a point where, you know, the body's taking so much punishment <clears throat> that uh, you get to that point of, it's kind of, uh, you know, the, at that point, you know, it's like diminishing returns. You're going to be really beating yourself down extra hard and just not performing at the level you once were. So I saw the writing on the wall. I had a back surgery. I saw the writing on the wall and uh, decided it was time to make a change. Uh, my my current, uh, in at that point, agent, um, pro talent, give them a little plug out of Chicago. Um, I talked to, talked to him and he's like, you know, there's really only one place for you to go. You know, you're, you're 34 years old, or whatever I was, 35. You know, if you want to continue to make your living as an athlete, pro wrestling is your, your basically that's your stop. And uh, <laughs> because obviously I didn't want to make some sort of a, you know, move backwards. I didn't want to go into a, you know, into a career that, that wasn't going to support the lifestyle because I was making a living as a, as a strong man. So, Anyway, wrestling was the deal. Hell, I was never a huge wrestling fan. I watched it as a kid here and there, purely because I loved to watch these big, strong guys. I mean, it was just, I was, I was completely moved and blown away as a youngster, you know, by, I should say, big, strong, massive people. Even if it was a woman, I didn't care. I just thought I was just totally enamored by, you know, big, powerful people. Anyway, so <clears throat> long and short of it, now that my wrestling career is kind of on a part-time basis and I don't, uh, I don't have a full-time contract with that anymore, I can kind of let the cat out of the bag in regards to that 
I didn't know how to wrestle. Um, I was never a huge wrestling fan. My agent basically, he basically doctored up a resume. I guess that's a, <laughs> a pretty uh, pleasant way of saying he, he created and lied for me. <laughs> he made a resume that said that I could do what I've never done before. And uh, because of the way I look, I got a shot in Japan. And uh, so he basically brings me up, you know, it was, it was basically a, a, it was a, a two, it was a contract only for two shows. And he said, look, you get over there and you do well, this whole thing's going to lift off. You fucking up. I'm, just, yeah, I'm, I'm assuming I can let my language flow over here since we're on a podcast, correct? Yeah, it's fine. Or should I refrain from no, that? No, no, no. No, don't worry about it. Um, okay. It's it's totally fine. We, we've we done it before on the show, and I'm sure it'll happen after this one, so go for it. <laughs> okay. So anyway, um, he basically said, you know, if I, if I didn't perform, that would probably be the end because, you know, the the business is, is tight-knit. You know, if, if you screw something up, everybody knows about it. And so I got over there, had a good couple of shows, and pow. He gave me a contract and off I went. So career of two pro wrestling, I went from, you know, from the time that I retired from Strongman to having a contract in Japan all in about nine months, which is, you know, pretty unheard of. I, I don't know that, that uh, I, I'm sure that somebody else has done pulled some stuff close to what I did, but you don't hear about it very often. That's for sure. So off I went to Japan, spent, uh, you know, close to the next decade, commuting back and forth to Japan. So I'd be there for two, three weeks home for a week or two. And that was the career of two. Um, all the while, you know, trained like a, like a, you know, mofo because that's who I am. You know, that's the, you know, the fat kid wouldn't have it any other way, you know? <laughs> so, so I've, I've got a question. How did those, two? how did those commutes back and forth, like affect your training or your lifestyle? Uh, Cause I mean, that's a, your, you're, uh, you've got quite Brutal, a, yeah, yeah, you've got quite a time change going on there. You know, at first it was pretty rough, but then, you know, as anything, your body will adapt and, you know, that's a large part of deep water. So it was kind of one of those things to why I looked at any really difficult situation as an opportunity. And that's exactly what I turned it into. So, you know, yes, it was brutal to, uh, you know, fly 13 hours, get up, you know, go to a press conference and then go to the gym, but that's exactly what I did, you know? So, uh, and then for that matter, go to go, you know, go have a match that night. And so, but there are plenty of times where the gym wasn't accessible and I would do what I called the hotel room workouts, you know, and I would just blow myself up doing push ups, sit ups, squats, lunges, and, you know, doing like a handstand, uh, you know, wall press, the shoulder press, just any way that I could keep myself on point. And, uh, so the answer to your question it was very tough, but, uh, you know, much, much like anything, if you want it bad enough, you find a way, you know? Yeah. So, Do you think it sounds uh, like when you got there, you kind of went into a routine that I'm going to guess was somewhat similar to home. Do you think that helped to, you know, th there is some evidence that you can do that. You know, if you go into the routine that you had at home, even with a big time change, it kind of resets your clock pretty rapidly. Did you find that that started to happen? Yeah, you basically, I, I agree with that. And, and, and uh, the biggest part about that is that you can't, if people say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm, if you get into the whole, I'm jet lagged, I'm this, I'm that, it just makes it 10 times worse than it is. It's going to suck, yes. But pull up your panties, get your shit done, and it's not nearly as bad <laughs> as if you sit around and cry about it, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. Anyway, so, but like I said, I just, I found a way, you know, I mean, I've, I've always been that guy between 290 and, you know, three, depending on height of strongman, 325, 330. So I could never allow myself, you know, to, to get, uh, you know, to get out of shape. And, and let's be honest, and from what I just told you, as far as getting my job in Japan, I was hired largely on the way that I look. So right. if I didn't maintain my look, there goes my contract, you know? So let's so, talk about that for a second. That I mean, the, the numbers you just threw out are ridiculous. Between 290 and what did you say, 320? Mm -hmm. Okay, and what percentage yeah, of body I, fat I, were I you at? I tried to claim, actually. 
<laughs> well, hold on. I try to claim. Okay. I was there was a day or two where I actually waited at three thirty, but I don't really claim that because you don't really own a wait for and having it for a day. But for the most part, three twenty is a very, very. Uh, that's a very realistic deal. Because just last week, I was actually almost most of the week I was three fifteen. So that's actually a current wait. Uh, but what percentage body fat? <laughs> I can tell you this. <laughs> never in the last. There's never been a point at any time in the last 20 years where I have not had a very, you know, very clear set of apps. There's never been a time that you, you could find me or a picture you could find me where I didn't have abdominals very, you know, very pink. So really tough to kind of put a body fat percentage, but that gives people an idea, you know, you know, you can say, you know, 10% or whatever percent, but it's hard for people to kind of put that into a, into a, you know, a picture, but you figure, like right now, you know, three fifteen ish with abs. That's a big son of a bitch, you know. Uh, oh yeah, that's I know. I, <laughs> it's it's pretty amazing. Unfortunately, Rocky, you haven't had the experience of standing next to John, but I, you know, I, can only imagine. I, I, I don't care. I can yeah, only imagine. It is. I saw, the, I saw his pictures online, man. <laughs> it is awe inspiring. <laughs> it really is. It, it's pretty <laughs> phenomenal standing next to this guy. <laughs> so anyway, we went from, so the, yeah, we're in your wrestling career. Um, yeah, so I did that. I did that. Uh, goodness, then when it was, uh, that was it last. Yeah, basically it was, it was the end of last year. I went to part-time with my wrestling career. You know, at, at 42, um, you know, they, they don't, they don't want to invest. You don't want to guarantee you a lot of money when, when uh, there's a possibility you could get hurt and they got to pay you for the rest of the year. So it's kind of, it's kind of par for the course. Um, and so my full time was part time. And also I found myself with, you know, with uh, time on my hands that very well, I guess it's time to apply myself to something else. I mean, I still had, I'm still wrestling, but it's far and few between. So I saw my schedule and I had a chunk of time large enough for me to actually do a, a full preparation for a bodybuilding contest. And uh, as a youngster, <clears throat> that's truly what I wanted. I wanted to be a pro bodybuilder in a bad way. And uh, then as, as I came to realize in early as my training, that I was actually much stronger than I looked. I thought, well, maybe strength was where I needed to go. That's what I did. But it doesn't change the fact that my first, my first, like what I wanted out of all this, all, all this hard work from the gym was to be a pro bodybuilder. So let's, let's give this crack, you know? So I'd actually, uh, you know, with some of my spare time, I'd actually opened a, a training facility. I said, I'll do a bodybuilding show to kind of, to, uh, kind of promote my training facility. And, uh, that sounds and, and, and for that matter, for, <laughs> yeah. and for that matter, deep water too, you know, cause I had just kind of let that go. And so, uh, anyway, long and short was I went to my, First bodybuilding competition, and you know you got to go through the normal channels, just like in Strum, and you got to win a, got to win a regional, then on to you know a pro qualifier. So I went and just freaking knocked the socks off of everybody at the, the first one, which was the Governor's Cup of Sacramento, and uh, it was a pretty good show too. There was like 600 competitors. Now keep in mind, a lot of those are you know bikini and all that stuff, but it was still it was not a, it was not a little podunk deal, and. Uh, so, you know, I, I, uh, I really, had, to be honest, I really had a good time too. You know, it felt like once again, <clears throat> all my training was kind of coming back full circle. You know, there's so much of my training that I never really knew why I was doing it. I just knew it was something I, I was just, I just had to do it. And so yet again, I was kind of falling into this place. Well, God, it's all making sense. So I'm not, I do great in my first show. So well, I guess it's definitely time to really set my sights on something that excites me, which in like my other careers is getting to the, getting to the, you know, the top or getting to the international play as soon as I could. So basically the next step for me bodybuilding was to turn pro. And so what I did was I, I selected a contest uh, that was, what was it? It was about 16 weeks after my first contest. So basically I prepped for my first contest for 15 took two weeks off, prepped for 14 for my second contest, and turned pro. So 
Um, you know, this is interesting that you might be able to help locate some information. I've heard from uh, um, a few bodybuilding historian type people that I'm one of, of probably two people that have turned pro in just two contests in bodybuilding, you know, because people spend, you know, there are people that, you know, try for their whole lives or, you know, turn pro in their 15th contest, not their second. Yeah. So there, so there it is, you know, once again, all in an extraordinarily short period of time, uh, you know, I, I made it into the, the international level of play. So I'm now an IFBB pro bodybuilder on top of my other two professions. So, uh, now the, now the goal is, is to, to, uh, you know, get out of that pro circuit and start knocking, uh, knocking some socks off people and doing well there too, like they have in everything else. So I'm, I'm excited. I feel like right now is I feel like this is where it's, it's like I'm at, a, I'm at square one all over again. And that's what really excites me because, you know, having a big goal in front of me, that's what really motivates me. You know, you, you give me a small goal and, and I don't, it doesn't really, doesn't get me in, in my belly. My belly doesn't turn. I want that goal that gives me butterflies, you know? So yeah. I'm there. So my, my pro, uh, my pro debut is going to be in, uh, the summer of 2015. And my plan is to try to get on that Olympia stage as quickly as possible. You know, that's the, that's the goal. You know, once you're, once you're on the Olympia stage, you're, you know, undeniably a top level. There's no way that anybody can argue that you're not a, you know, top of the line pro when you're on the Olympia stage. Yeah. And, and this is, you know, people shouldn't think that you went from nothing to, you know, 16 weeks, you were on a bodybuilding stage in one. I mean, this is, this is kind of part of your, you've done a lot of amazing things. And throughout that, your training and your diet and even your kind of some psychological, um, visualization stuff that you have in, in your deep water method that, you know, I didn't realize was going to be part of that when you were first telling me about your book, like all of that together over all these decades is, is what's allowed you to stay in that kind of shape and in that world and have that attitude to where you could jump from profession to profession and just immediately perform at a top level. Yeah, 100%. My, you know, there's no question that, you know, my deep water method, you know, just like you said, was, you know, it put me in a position, you know, as far not only physically, but mentally, you know, with the mental toughness that you develop when you follow the program to where, you know, I, I got myself to where, you know, I, I could make these jumps in this very short period of time. You know, you obviously, you know, when you're 300 plus pounds and you keep yourself in great shape, <laughs> You know, for 20 years, it's, it's amazing what you can do. <laughs> yeah, it's just so, there so, you have it. <laughs> so, Rocky, and the patients that you deal with who've kept themselves 300 pounds plus for more than 10 years, uh, how, how would you compare their their physical aptitude with with what you've heard <laughs> John talk about so far? <laughs> the exact polar opposite. <laughs> It's just so such just, a different I mean, world. Just listening to John speak, I'm just shaking my head like constantly. I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> but I was gonna, oh, I was gonna, you, I, I was gonna say though, <laughs> but because of the way you've done things, you know, it's probably it's you're you're in that spot where you know you can make those jumps, and it's probably it's effort and it's work. You know, I'm sure. Don't I'm not gonna minimize what you're doing. I mean, obviously, it's, it's a lot of work and effort, but because of what you've been doing, it sounds like you've got it kind of dialed in so well that making those steps aren't as um, gigantic as if, uh, as if to other people that were not necessarily taking care of themselves or maybe new or not employing some of your methods. So, I mean, it sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, one of the, one of the things that, uh, you know, that the deep water method is, is really, really strong with is, is it makes the things that you do outside of training seem easy. And so, you know, it's almost like, uh, you know, when you go and, and you compete and you feel like that was kind of a light training day, you know, you, you really, then you start to really see that, Hey, you know, you you've got yourself in a position where what other people can't do, you know, you're able to perform and you're able to do it over and over and over. And I mean, let's be honest as, <clears throat> as an athlete of any nature, what are you trying to do? You're trying to be able to perform in a way that other people can't. 
And so, you know, you boil it all down. That's what the deep water method is. It's, it's, you know, there's no question that there's a huge, you know, physical side as far as the training, but the largest benefits come from the, you know, the mental toughness and the mental fortitude that is going to be, you know, I want to say kind of structured because people have it. Most people have much more than they realize. And that's why it's so powerful because it's not like I'm saying, you know, Hey, only, you know, one one person out of a hundred thousand can apply to anybody can use this and anybody can have just astounding forward progress when they start to, you know, when they start to use the method properly and they start to basically take the limits that they see, the limits that I can see this for just about anybody and even myself because I'm constantly breaking down my own barriers. What you see to be your limits and you see to be these, these, you know, what, what is your limit now <clears throat> is truly a facade because I guarantee you can knock that wall down and there's another one that's in front of it. And that's what it's all about. You are constantly taking, you know, moving forward and expanding, you know, your mind. And when you expand your mind and your work ethic and your work capacity, your body follows. So, and this isn't something you, I mean, you've obviously, you've trained a lot of athletes and, and um, you've trained with a lot of athletes as well, but this isn't something that you've applied just to, like super competitive people. I, you know, I saw some of your testimonials for the book and some of the people you worked with and, you know, that you've got a, a great collection of just kind of everyday people from even, you know, soccer moms who've gotten out of shape. Yeah. So just yeah. like, how does it, how, so just give us kind of that scenario. I'm just, I'm just kind of curious because I've, heard sure. stories of your training and I have seen your training partners <laughs> train before and it is incredible. And so I can't imagine a soccer mom doing that. That's why, you know, the, the book was kind of an eye opener that your training method is as much about the psychological component as the actual workload that you yeah. put people through. Well, the first thing is that everybody's deep water is different. It's, it's, it's unique to the person too. It's mine is different than yours. Yours is different than Rocky's. And so, so for the soccer mom or the everyday person or someone who has not really been down any sort of this path, these are the people that benefit the most because they will, I mean, the, the, the steps that they're going to make forward are going to be so tremendous. It's unbelievable. When, you know, when you have, say, a soccer mom that, you know, is, is basically given the tools of the deep water method and starts to apply them, you know, the things that used to be difficult in her life are not difficult anymore. And that's the freedom of this thing is that you're basically, you're, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not simply pushing a button. You've got to work for it, but it's pretty addicting when you can work for something, achieve it, and then realize in the process that you're bettering all of these other venues of your life. So, you know, for that soccer mom or for, you know, the, you know, the, the, the dad that's the electrician, whatever, for the, the everyday person, these are the people that benefit the most because they, they have the, they're the ones that have the, their perception of their own limitations are so far skewed from what they, from what they actually are. You know, say for an athlete, I get my hands on a, on a, you know, an athlete who's already been used to pushing himself, he's going to make huge gains. He's going to have great results too, but he's already kind of started down the path of, of trying to get to the next level. It's that person that's never really been, you know, never really kind of started down that path that is just going to be absolutely blown away. <clears throat> you know, like with my nutrition program, my deep water nutrition, it's no, it's, it's not easy, but once you get into it, it's, actually very easy to make a lifestyle because you know the the thing like you said I, I guess the easiest way to put it is once you start to put these methods into your training and you truly apply them then they kind of start to spill over into the rest of your life and that's what makes the method so incredible is that you know it, it's it really betters other venues of your life you know I, I, so many I mean I try not to, to be I try not to sell life it too much because I want 
the betterment of, of one's life, I want them to recognize it. I don't want me to have to say that, hey, you know, I'm going to say, yes, use this for your training. And all of a sudden when they start saying, God, you know, getting up in, in the morning has never been so easy, you know, or sticking to my diet has, has never been so easy. You know, all these things that used to be a challenge, you know, start to come easier in life. That's where the, that's, I mean, that's when the magic starts to happen. You just become more of a, you're as a human being, you become a more efficient creature. And that's, I mean, when, when you see that, that's the most incredible thing. You know, I mean, I, I've used it, you know, I developed it because, you know, I was this, you know, probably petrified of my own shadow. I shouldn't say probably. I was petrified of my own shadow, fat kid, without any self-esteem. And I created this whole, you know, not even knowing as I was creating it. Um, but then once I started to look back, I realized, wow, there's something going on here. And then once I started to kind of, share with training partners and other people, they started to have the same benefits. And uh, that's when I, that's, you know, that, like I said, that's when the magic happens. When, when you actually see people take this and it changed their life, you know, I mean, I, I really had no, I had no major interest in sharing how I did things with, you know, with the public, you know, until not too long ago. And uh, I, I gotta be honest, you know, once I start to see people change their lives, I, I sometimes wish that I would have done it 10 years ago. You know? But I have, you know, there's a, there's a guy who I helped with the, his nutrition. And all he wanted was the nutrition side of it, you know. And that's fine. I want to help people however they want to be helped. And uh, he was one of those guys that had huge issues with, with, uh, with binge eating. And one of the big problems he had was at nighttime, you know, like many of us, we sit down and we watch TV with our wife or our girlfriend or loved ones, and you sit there and you battle with yourself on not going to the refrigerator to eat something you're not supposed to, you know? And this guy had been to multiple psychologists trying to fix the problem. Anyway, through me helping him with my methods, he now refers to me as, and, and uh, no, this is, this is not at all supposed to, to be a, a knock on you, Rocky. Dr. Jones, <laughs> because, you know, he said that I, I had basically done more for him than, than the, than the doctors that were trying to help him, you know, and it's all because, like I said before, once you start to apply these methods, it makes the things that were once challenging easier. He said, I have never been able to sit on the couch with my wife and enjoy a movie without having an inner, an inner struggle of getting up and going to the refrigerator and eating stuff I'm not supposed to. And I thought, man, now that, God, if I could have been doing this 10 years ago, I mean, it's, it's it really, I got to say, it really brings me a lot of happiness to see other people take this method to help me and see it help them too. You know, it's really amazing. So. So is the book, you know, is, I, it, is the, the book and deep, the, the, the method basically kind of almost like a, a three pronged approach. It's kind of body, um, me, you know, mental and diet. I mean, or, or training diet and, and and mental health. Is it kind of the way of look at it, or because it's got it's well, got basically, kind of, the, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll kind of lay it out. So, really, what it comes down to is, you know, the the diet is designed. There's a diet section for sure. You know, that's real clear. There's actually a food list. There's a way for it lays out how you can, you know, better the quality of your life. You know, not only for your health but for your mental health of, you know, being able to move forward with a diet that's not just going to turn your life upside down. And so that's, that's one aspect. And then the other aspect, as far as the training, this is where kind of the spiritual side comes into play because this is where you push yourself to, you know, create new boundaries and, and you're expanding, you know, your mental toughness and your capacity, your work capacity and, and all of this it, as, as you start to learn to push yourself, and I, I really lay it out clearly, and, and I even, as far as like the beginner's program, I lay it out by the week, so you walk through it. You actually have a protocol that you follow through, and you, you basically, just by following the program, you're kind of forced to expose yourself to, you know, you know having this, this mental growth, you know, and through this mental growth with the training, 
now looking at the diet, it's really not that difficult to stick to the, to the, you know, the first off, everything I do is simple. I feel like people get lost in details. You, you keep it really simple and you make a lot of progress going forth. So through the training and, and, you know, creating this new found mental strength, following a few rules that you have for the diet, it actually becomes quite easy. And so there's really no plan as far as, you know, ABC to, you know, expand your, you know, your, your mental strength. It's kind of a side effect of the training. So it, it's really beautiful in the regards that you got your training, you got your diet and everything else that comes out of this is, is like a, a good side effect, if you will. It's kind of interesting. I know it, it, it's interesting how this ties together and how you've tied training together with the mental aspect because it, there's been a lot of new research on, you know, the science of meditation and all this. And a long time ago, I came to the conclusion, you know, you, you hear about all these people who practice yoga and, and not the physical type, but like the mental yoga and the meditation yeah. and Zen meditation, and they're trying to achieve this state where their their mind basically blanks out, and you know they you know they feel this oneness, what whatever. And it occurred to me that when you any physical activity, and I think this is why running is addictive and can be as addictive as heavy weightlifting for those who are serious, is you reach that point, especially in the weight room, if you're pushing yourself, where you know you literally hit this state of being that I I think. People meditate and try to achieve for years and you can go into the gym and if you're pushing through your limitations every workout, you have this same experience. You know, I can remember times in the gym where there was nothing. You know, I was under a massive load of weight and there was nothing going through my mind at all. I didn't hear anybody. I didn't really see anything. <laughs> yeah. You know, there was just and, – and I'm sure you know – you've had this experience too. It's just – there is some physical object that needs to move and you're moving it. And it's almost not even a thought of strain or anything else at that point. Your mind literally just kind of becomes so singularly focused, everything turns off. Everything else turns off. Um, and those moments to me, you know, when I look back on my life and like when my academic performance was the best and, you know, just all of those kind of things – it's when I was constantly trying yeah. to push through new goals. And it was that mental aspect in the gym. I, 100%. And that's kind of where that's exactly the, what you're saying is exactly what I was referencing as far as, um, you know, the, the, all of the, there's the diet and the training and all of the other things in your life that gets better are like these great side effects, you know? So it's, it's 100% true. You know, you, you, uh, you know, every time you train and you follow the program, the goal is, is to take another step forward. You know, too many there, and Peter, you've probably seen this too. You go to the gym and you see people, the same people, that, you know, for the last 10 years. But the only thing that is different about them from 10 years ago until today is the color of their hair because they just show <laughs> up. They're not really making forward steps. You know, right. <laughs> you know yep. they, they start, you, you start seeing the gray hair and, and there's, I mean, it's a really a waste of, the t of their time because, you know, the, the body and here's here, you know, it's kind of going in a little bit of the, you know, I like to boil things down. I like to look at just the basic stuff and then you, you understand more of what's going on. The body wants to survive. I mean, that's, that's what it's all about. So it's constantly adapting <clears throat> and if it can adapt to something, and not have to adapt again, that's exactly what it's going to do. So the deep water method is 100% about giving your body something new to adapt to every chance you get, because that's what makes you grow. And I'm not talking just about physically. I'm talking about that your whole being grows, you know? Um, so that's, that's really, that's 100%, you know, kind of falls in line with what you're saying. You know, you, you said that the, the things that were going the best in your life, the things that were going the best is when you were, when you were pushing in the gym, because you were constantly forcing yourself to adapt. And, you know, you adapt to one thing, you grow a little bit. And let's, let's be totally honest. Think about when, you know, like when you're a, 
uh, the blue one, let's, let's relate it to weightlifting. You know, when you're early lifter, let's say you, you can bench 200 pounds, right? And then, you know, you get to that point where you can bench 300 pounds. Think about all of the other things, you know, in the gym that are going to grow just because of the, the because you push yourself on just the bench press. You know, when you force yourself to grow in one venue, everything else around you will kind of grow as a, you know, it, it's just like a, I don't know what you would call it. It's just, you know, it's, it's just what happens, you know? And so, the, dear, the deep water method is all about forward progress. And the beautiful thing about the deep water method is everybody has their own definition of forward progress. This does not just apply itself to, obviously, the, you know, overall, you know, quality of life is definitely a, you know, a common thread to this. Mm-hmm. But, you know, the gym is, or lifting weights, the better way to put it, is just the kind of the, the tool that is used to prompt all of this. That makes sense, you know? Yeah. It, it's, it seems like that growth is almost habit-forming and it's self-perpetuating in a way. I assume 100%. once you get a taste of that. 100%. 100%. And it, it really is addictive because, you know, you... When you, when you do something and you achieve it, that's great, number one. But then when you, when you achieve a goal and you recognize that achieving that goal actually made all these other things get better, I mean, how can you not fall in love with that, you know? I, I know from a patient care standpoint, one of the problems we see here on a daily basis is just getting a person to make that first step to get that first, get over that first hump. It it's, seems like that first hump is the biggest to get over. Um, I mean, I'm sure you probably see that with people. With, uh, you know, clients have trained with you or, and, and probably what you've gotten feedback from people who've, you know, done the program. What is your, what would you take, be your take in terms of trying to get over that first hill? Well, that's a great one. And one of the things that I kind of touched on briefly was the simplicity of it. I try not to confuse people with details. And then the, the, the second fold of that would be the no nonsense approach to this. Um, you know, if, if, if you give yourself a reason not to do, you, most people will take that reason not to take the first step. And so this, this really has kind of a no excuses um, feel to it. When you read the book, it's, it's really designed, obviously, to let you see that light at the end of the tunnel. Um, and it's designed to get you motivated enough to get up and make that first step. But I think the biggest thing is when you read, because there's a lot of information, there's also some stories in the book. And so when you read that and you see how I go about what I do, you, you, the no nonsense, the no excuse approach is so clear. Um, it's, it's, it doesn't even have to be set. This is just the way the program works. If, if you want to be a part of the program, you're, you're going to have to take your excuses and flush them down the toilet. You know, there's, there's no two ways about it. So I guess to answer your question, by reading the book, it should give you that kick in the, in the, in the pants you're looking for to get off the couch. And, uh, you know, once you, you, follow, you follow this thing for a week, you're going to see immediate gains. And then here, like we talked about a minute ago, the, you know, the addiction of forward progress starts to take over. Yeah, I, I think one thing you, you do that's interesting that a lot of people ignore, and it's just context. Like you don't the the way you set things up, and even you know talking to you and having you know personal experiences around you, you never talk to people, and you never talk about what it is you don't want to happen. You don't say, "Well, I don't want to get fat. I don't yeah. want this. I don't that." You talk <laughs> about what you want, and a lot of people actually yeah. have a very very hard time just sitting down and saying what they want. They can tell you what they don't want. They can tell you what they don't want to happen. But it's very difficult for them to say what they want. And, you know, I, I think one thing you weave in, and I, I don't know if this was intentional or, you know, it's just part of your – has become part of your life philosophy. But you do look at that factor. You don't ask, okay, what is it that you don't want? You ask, okay, what is it that you want? Okay, now that we know what you want, yeah. we can move toward that. Instead of trying to move away from something that's, you know, a little amorphous, if you're just – Moving away from stuff you don't want, you don't really have a direction. And you do a good job of guiding that to, okay, let's really say what it is you want. Okay, now that we know that, yeah. 
let's take that first step towards what you want. Don't worry about all the crap you don't want. Let's just move towards what yeah. you want. Yeah, so, you know, and on that level too, you know, one of the words that hasn't come up yet that really, you know, what you're talking about is exactly what this word is, is commitment. And I think that when people, you know, the, the commitment, you'll, you'll, some of this stuff is not really spoke about, but you feel the commitment of the program, if that makes sense. And, you know, part of this, you know, this, this part of the program that makes it so addicting is, you know, you're going to find yourself having new experiences. Like when you really, most people don't truly understand what commitment is. You know, commitment is about, you make a commitment. There is no, there's no excuse that's good enough. You know, and when people start to really understand commitment, commitment to their program, commitment to their diet, it is just, I mean, it is completely life changing, you know, and it's, it's, that's one of those things that, you know, when I commit to something, it's, it's like, it just kind of takes my life over in a good way. Um, I'm the happiest when I'm committed to something, when I'm not committed to something, I feel a little bit lost. You know, of course there are plenty of things that you have to stay committed to just to have your life and be a good person. But I'm talking about, you know, when it comes to my career, um, when I make that commitment, I, I don't see anything else like that. Kind of a funny story. When I was on the way to um, get my pro card, um, one of my planes got canceled and got a long story, but I had some layover. I was, you know, basically sitting in the San Francisco airport and my training partner, he was going with me and he said to me, he goes, uh, you know, what are you going to do if you don't win? <laughs> and, uh, I looked at him kind of slowly and I said, to be honest, I've never even thought about that. And that kind of plays into what you were saying a minute ago, Kiefer. It's, I, I didn't plan around what I was going to do if I didn't win. All of my plans were to win and that's all I saw. And it's, you know, when you, when you learn to commit to this utmost level, you, you start to realize that, you know, the world is at your fingertips. The only thing that stands between you and your goals is time. You know, it's, it's that simple. The formula boils itself down. You get rid of all the distractions. Just like you said, don't think about what you don't want. Don't think about what's going to happen if you fail. You commit. And you stay committed, and then it's just a matter of time. Let that time, you're, you're chewing on time, you reach your goal, bam, there it is. You know, it's... it's uh, I'll tell you, I, I start getting fired up just talking about this. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> well, it's, you know, from you, you've actually, you've been on my show before. You were on a previous incarnation of my show a long time ago. I guess that was a couple of years ago now. Yeah. And my audience yeah. knows I, I've shifted a little bit away from performance and training more towards the health side of things. You know, of course, I've, I've got a, you know, a medical doctor on the show now as the co-host, but I, I don't want people to lose sight of some of the important factors. Well, uh, how important training is, period. So your program that really helps even just novice people to get started and get moving and push through what they think of as physical limitations, like I cannot stress the importance of that. There's this weird well, – not weird. There's this idea that we've had in our culture ever since Descartes that says, you know, your brain is the center of all your logic and rational reasoning and your mathematical abilities and your intelligence as we measure it today, that's all located in your brain. But modern cognitive science has shown that it's not. The brain is actually more like a locus of emotion. It is your body. It is your ability to move through space, and it is your experiences moving through space and how good your body is at that that actually helps us to think better in a more logical, constructive way. And that's why we always see there's lots of studies that show that performance correlates um, – academic performance correlates with exercise programs. If kids exercise, their, their academic yes. performance goes up. Usually the smartest person on the team is the quarterback uh, on a football team, oddly enough. They, us <laughs> they do. Yeah. you know, they, yeah. They're usually the ones taking calcu calculus courses – 
Um, but you know, they're yep. the star quarterback, and there is that connection between their phys- their ability to move in a physical way and highly coordinated action, and their ability for their brain to then tackle highly coordinated problems. You know, so this this aspect of getting people working out and especially giving them focal points to keep them on that track, uh, you know, like you attempt to do in, in deep water. I, I can't stress the health benefits of that. And especially for children, you know, in schools around the country are cutting out recess because they don't think kids need to play because they don't think it's important to academics. It is critically important to academics. It's amazing. Um, and, and this is, yeah. you know, this rant is a good segue because you've got another, you know, kind of not-for-profit project that you were working on that I believe you got launched in San Francisco um, mm-hmm. for for underprivileged youths to um, kind of give them something different to focus on, to commit to, as you were talking about. Um, is that still, do you still have that project running or has it morphed? You know, it's really, it is still going and it has kind of morphed a little bit. As, as most things that we do, you know, in life, if you really want to be successful, you have to continually, uh, you know, have it evolve, if you will. And so um, really what it comes down to is, is there basically exactly what you're saying, you know, where we take uh, kids that don't have the opportunity um, to use exercise to better their lives. Uh, and we help them with that. And so really, uh, it's kind of evolved a little bit more into athletes uh, because, you know, obviously that's where I have the biggest impact as far as, you know, like when I do a lot of speaking with, you know, with, with youth, I feel like that's a great way that I can give back. <laughs> and of course, <clears throat> excuse me, I grab the attention of, of all of the kids I speak with, but right. it's the young aspiring athletes. <laughs> it's the young aspiring athletes that, probably would gravitate to me the most because, you know, I, when I tell them my story, you know, that I was, you know, you know, the, like I said, the, you know, the, uh, late, you know, I was really late to puberty. I was overweight, I had huge self-esteem problems. I had a whopping case of dyslexia, which they didn't even identify back then. And then I worked my way to where I am. You know, that's where these athletes that, that, uh, the young athletes that, some of them actually have the force. They, they can actually see the fact that this could be help in having them create a better life for themselves. And so, you know, that's, that's what it comes down to. I felt like it kind of evolved from trying to help, you know, uh, you know, the, just the general public kids. Of course, they're all general public kids. But, I mean, being a little bit more precise with, you know, having my efforts actually change lives, if that makes sense. It's, you know, my – my uh, my efforts with say a young athlete who um, sees the fact that he could actually go to college based on his athletic ability, that's probably where I'm making the biggest impact at this point. So uh, you know it's in you know even with deep water in general, you know it's it's uh, it's really comes down to helping people, you know and and uh, you know going back to what you said a minute ago as far as the health and all that stuff. You know, we're talking about deep water in this latest version of the book is designed more for anybody who wants to make a change in their life, anybody who wants to see, you know, self-improvement, anybody who wants to, you know, make their life better. So it's really, uh, you know, I think I'm at that point for sure in my life where giving back Obviously, Deep Water is is uh, is uh, you know a, a book that is for sale. But you know my efforts with some of the other underprivileged kids is purely to give back, you know, and to to help those that that with just a, a little bit of help can actually change their lives for good, you know. And uh, I guess kind of tying the two together, you know, um, you know Deep Water is one of these that. It's, it's like, a, you know, it's deep waters helped all walks of life from really competitive athletes to, you know, the, you know, the soccer mom, you know, I've had multiple, um, you know, mothers who have lost 70 plus pounds 
and have, you know, they're just, their quality of life has just exploded, you know, meaning that the things that they couldn't do, they get to do now, you know, they, they get to do things that they couldn't do with their families because now they're fit and they're healthy. And so, you know, I guess it just, just really excites me that, you know, the things that, you know, that, that I developed in my life now are helping other people and not just people like me, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's just, it's just, I'm completely honored to have people take what I developed and better their lives. There's, you know, there's not, there's not, uh, there's not much better than that, to be honest for me. You know, I, I never quite realized how fulfilling it was going to be to watch, you know, other people's lives change for the better. It's just really, really exciting. And uh, we're actually that that's a pretty good place to, to leave off. You know, that's pretty much why I'm here, why Rocky decided to join, you know, join up with, um, you know, everything I do. And that's uh, pretty much while, why we're working together as well, uh, you and me, John. So, um, and, you know, and we're at the end of the hour. So any, do you have any final commentary, Rocky? No, I think that uh, the enthusiasm that you probably see from people who you either work with or read your book and get feedback with is really just kind of um, – it's inspiring and it's really encouraging. And I think I think Kiefer's seen that with people that he's worked with. I've seen it in patients that I've worked with. And so I think that enthusiasm can be very contagious. And I'm almost at a point now where I think I want to cancel patients this afternoon, download your book, and read it. So we'll, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> But but it's really uh, I think I think that but that that enthusiasm is enthusiasm is what people need they need to, they need that kick in the pants sometimes as well so I think that combination is a good combination the enthusiasm and the kick in the pants you know yeah you exude excitement when you talk about it John it's um, <laughs> it's nice well, to hear know, the one thing that I, I thank you very much and the one thing that I just I just feel I just feel like I have to say and it's just kind of a just a, just a simple call out to anybody who feels like maybe they can't is that I just, it, you probably could put the pieces of the puzzle together through this podcast of me talking about where I started, but just in plain language for anybody that, that didn't quite catch and put it together, I was not an athlete. You know, God reached down, tapped me on the shoulder and said, you're fat and you're not an athlete, you know, and that's where I started. And it was through hard work and determination and all of the things that, that deep water is that now is at any of your fingertips. It's that that changed my life and to live in my dream. And it's possible for anybody, anybody who's listening, trust me when I tell you it is possible for you. Like I said earlier, if you commit and you follow the program, the only thing that stands between your goals and you right now is time. And if you have the commitment and you have the tenacity and you are ready to follow the program, the world is at your fingertips. So I just want everybody to know that you can. All right. I, <laughs> I think that's, that's a good place to end. And uh, thanks for being on the show, John. Yeah, that, that was a great ending. It really was. And thanks for being on the show. We will keep you updated on the when John's newest version of Deep Water uh, that is uh, it, it'll be out very soon. We'll keep you posted on that. Uh, make sure you get on the email list uh, so that you can be aware of when that is re-released. He did have an earlier version, but that was very, very focused on the athlete. And, um, you, you know, I, I'm I'm very impressed by his new version that'll be out pretty soon. So. Um, everybody wait for that. And, uh, thanks again for being on the show, John and Rocky, like as always. Thanks. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time, Peter. And that's another episode of body. I O F M. You've been listening to body. I O F M with your hosts, Kiefer and Dr. Rocky. If you'd like to hear more, log on to body.io. We'll be back next time with more science from the pinnacle of human health and performance.